Hey, this is Mrs. Rodriguez with Module 3, Lesson 3. So for our warm-up today, we have a practice cast question. Let's go ahead and read it. The entry fee to the fair is $4. So let's go ahead and highlight the four. Each ride requires a ticket that costs 50 cents. Heidi spent a total of $12. How many tickets did Heidi purchase? Okay, so let's start with, if she spent $12 and four of them was the entry fee, then we can do 12 minus four and that equals eight. That means Heidi had $8 left to purchase tickets for the rides, okay? In $1, in $1, you can get two rides because each ride's 50 cents, right? So if she has eight dollars, eight times two is 16. So your answer is B, 16. Okay, opening exercise. Solve the problem using a tape diagram. A sum of money was shared between George and Benjamin in the ratio of three fourths. If the sum of the money was $56, how much did George get? Okay, so first we have George and Benjamin. So let's go ahead and list them. One got three, and the other one got four of the total amount of money, right? Three parts and four parts of the total money. So. Here's how you know which one's the three and which one's the four. George is listed first, so he is the first number. Ben is listed second, so he would then be the second number. Now, if I'm gonna do a tape diagram, that means George has three boxes, and Ben, I'm gonna go ahead and move Ben down a little bit so we have room to work. Ben would have four boxes. Okay. And we know that if you add all the boxes together, it would equal $56. So if we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boxes that make up $56, then we can do 56 divided by seven, and we now know that there's $8 in each box. Okay. Now the question asks, how much did George get? Okay. Well, in this tape diagram, you can clearly see George has three boxes, $8 in each box. So that is eight times three. So George got $24 out of the total $56. All right, now for these next several problems, we're just gonna practice drawing tape diagrams, okay? So for the first one, we have three plus two. Represent using a tape diagram. Well, three would be three boxes, and two would be two boxes. So the first three boxes would be three, and then you have two. And here's my tape diagram. Represent x plus two using a tape diagram. Now in this case, we're still gonna have two boxes for the two. For the x, we're only gonna have one box, and the reason is we don't know what x equals, so we don't know how many boxes to give it, so we're just gonna give it the one box and label it x. Now it says draw a rectangular array for three times three plus two. So we're gonna take the three plus two that we did above, and we know we're gonna have five boxes, Okay, except now we have this three multiplied by it. So that means it's these five boxes, but three times. So I can go ahead and add two more rows to my tape diagram. The first three boxes are three. The second two boxes are my two. So this is my three plus two, and I should be writing the plus signs. 
The rows are how many times it's being multiplied by, and in this case, three times. So that would be my rectangular array. Just looking at this rectangular array, we can see what three times three plus two is without calculating that out because we could just number the boxes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I know that this equals 15, and I did that by just counting the boxes in my tape diagram, or my rectangular array. So now we have draw an array for three times x plus two. So we know that the x plus two is gonna be three boxes. The first two are gonna be my two. The first one's gonna be my x, just like up here above, except now it's multiplied by three, so I'm gonna have three rows. And the number of rows is how much we're multiplying by, okay? And in this case, if you wanted to be able to count to see what it would equal, well, in the first column, these are x's, and we have three of them because it's times three. And then in the second column, we have the number two, so we can just number these and count and see how many we get. And in this case, we have three X's plus six, and that would be the answer for this one, okay? All right, moving on. Determine the area of each re region using the distributive property. So, let's go ahead and highlight that. Using the distributive property in the area of each region. They call it the area because you'll notice we have a rectangle here, and the base of our rectangle is 16, and the length is 11. And we know that the area of a rectangle equals the length times the width. So we have a width of 16 and the length of 11. So for this box, we can do length times width, and that would give us 16 times 11, which is, let me write it out, 16 times 11, which equals 176, okay? Now, we have this other box, and this other box is, or I'm sorry, rectangle is there, and in this case, our width is five. Our length, is still 11 because it's just as high as the other side, right? It's all connected. So we would have 11 times five. So this rectangle would be worth 55, okay? And that's why they say find the area because you're taking the area of each box separately. Now we can add them together because keep in mind if this was a regular problem, this would be 16 plus five and it would be multiplied by 11. It would look like this, 11 times 16 plus five. Now that we've found the area of each rectangle inside the box, we now know it equals 176 plus 55, and our total is gonna to be 231. Okay. All right, example two. Draw a tape diagram to represent each expression. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the first one. Remember, whatever's inside the parentheses, the boxes connect. So for x plus y, we're gonna have an x and a y, and together that makes x plus y. And because there's three of them, this is gonna be plus x and y plus x and y. And this is gonna be x plus y, and this one will be x plus y, okay? And that's all you need to do, they just want us to draw a tape diagram, okay? So go ahead, um, pause the video, you try to draw the tape diagrams for B, C, and D, and then when you're done and you have your tape diagrams, go ahead and restart the video to see if you got the, uh, the correct answer. So go ahead and pause the video now. Hi, welcome back. Okay, so, for B, oops, for B, you should have three boxes, okay? These together, it's X plus X plus X. 
and then plus three boxes for y. And this is your y plus y plus y. For c, 3x and 3y's, we're going to have six boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six. The first three are going to be x's. The second three are going to be y's. And this is our 3x plus 3y. And then over here, this is going to be an array because it's multiplied by the 3 out front. So we're going to have x and y for x plus y. But we're going to have three rows because it has 3 multiplied with it. So each row is going to be how many times it's multiplied. In the first column, we're going to have x's. In the second column, we're going to have y's. And all together, this would make 3x plus 3y. You didn't have to solve it but or simplify it, but I'm just doing that so you can see how you would count that array. All right, moving on. Example 3. Find an equivalent expression by modeling with a rectangular array and applying the distributive property to the ex expression 5 times 8x plus 3. All right, so 5 times 8x plus 3. Well, we know that we have 8x plus 3, and then it's being multiplied by that 5. So I'm going to go ahead, and instead of drawing out 8 boxes for the 8x, I'm just going to leave it as 2 boxes. Okay, and I'm going to say this box is the 8x and this is 3. And then I'm going to say that my multiple is 5. This is a simpler way of drawing an array. Instead of having all those multiple boxes, we can just do the area method like we did in um, example 1 right here. Right here. We could do the area method. So we have... 5 times 8x for our first box, so it's going to be 5 times 8x, which is 40x, and then 5 times 3, and 5 times 3 is 15. So this would equal 40x plus 15. Okay, that would be the area. Exercise 2 for parts A and B. Draw an array for each expression and apply the distributive property to expand each expression. Substitute the given numeral, numerical values for, um, to demonstrate the equivalency. Sorry, I'm a little tired today. Okay, so this is what I want to say about this. You don't have to draw an array every single time. Remember, there's always multiple ways of doing the same thing in math. You need to figure out which way works for you. We've been drawing arrays, and I'll show you the first example drawing the array, but I also am going to show you an, two other methods that you could use too. And you need to pick which one works for you. And if you've come up with a fourth way, then that's great also. Remember, I only care about you getting the right answer. Um, if anybody tells you there's only one way to do something in math, that's so just simply not true. Everybody thinks in different ways, so you need to figure out what works for you. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to split this up into three, okay? Now, in the first one, I'm going to draw the array. I'm going to have my two boxes. Here's my x, here's my one, here's my two. Um, and two times x is two x, two times one is two. And that gives me two x plus two. Keep in mind in these problems, they're not telling you what the variable equals, so you've got to plug it in. So wherever there's an x, I'm going to put a 5. So that would be 2 times 5 plus 2, and 2 times 5 is 10, plus 2 equals 12. And we get 12 as an answer. Now, the second way I'm going to show you is with the arrow method. Now, the arrow method, you just don't have to draw out the boxes. You know that it's going to be two times each number that's inside the parentheses. So you're going to do two times x and then two times one. So that's going to be two x, two times one is two, 
Once again, x equals 5, so you're going to substitute 5 in for x. That gives you 10 plus 2, and that equals 12. Okay, so if you like it that way, go for it. Now, for the last method, we can actually use order of operations because it tells us what x equals. So here's the problem once again. 2 times x plus 1, and x equals 5. Well, wherever there's an x, I'm going to put a 5. So this is going to give me 2 times 5 plus 1. Now in PEMDAS, parentheses comes first, so we're going to add the 5 and the 1, and that gives me 6. And then I simply multiply, and I get 12. Okay? So like I said, if you like drawing the tape diagrams, do that. If you like the arrow method, do that. If you want to do order of operations, that's all good too. Go ahead and try to do B on your own. Pause the video, and when you have your answer, restart the video so you can see if you did it correctly. So go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, welcome back. So for B, you would have ended up with 2 times 10, which is 20C, plus 10 times 5, which is 50. That C equals 1. So you're going to have 20 times 1 plus 50. 20 times 1 is just 20 plus 50 equals 70. And 70 is your answer. C and D, same thing. You're going to solve it, um, except the only difference is, is now it's the difference, right? They're going to be subtracting um, instead of adding inside the parentheses. But you're going to distribute the outside number. And then you're going to plug in the variable to see what you get. So go ahead and pause the video again. And once you have your video or your answers, go ahead and restart the video to see if you got the answers correct. Pause the video now. Welcome back. Okay, so for C, 3 times 4F is 12F. 3 times 1 is 3 f equals 2, so this is going to be 12 times 2 minus 3. You multiply before you subtract in order of operations, so 24 minus 3, and you get 21. For d, 9 times 3 is negative 27r. 9 times 11 is going to be minus 99 r equals 10, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in wherever I see an r, I'm going to put a 10. So this is going to be negative 27 times 10 minus 99. That's going to equal negative 270 minus 99, and that equals negative 369. Okay, if you got them right, good job. Example 4. Rewrite the expression 6x plus 15 divided by 3 in standard form using the distributive property. So this is now going into division, right? Before, we were distributing a multiple through. We were multiplying through. But now we're dividing. But really, it's the same kind of concept. Let me choose a new color. Um, we have 6x plus 15. Okay, well, I can write it like this. So you should try writing it vertically because I think it makes more sense than writing it or it's easier to see than writing it horizontally. And just like the multiplying where you had to do uh, the multiple of each one, like up here, you multiplied the 9 and then the 3R and then the 9 and the 11, you're going to divide each number by the number you're dividing by. So you're going to divide the 6X by 3 and then the 15 by 3. So you're going to divide this one here first and then this one. And you would get 6 divided by 3x plus 15 divided by 3. 3 goes into 6 two times, so that's 2x. And 15 divided by 3 is 5, and you end up with 2x plus 5. All right, let's try another one of those. Now we have 2b plus 12 divided by 2. So remember, you're going to take whatever number you're dividing by, and you're going to divide the first number in the parentheses with it, and then the second number in the parentheses with it. 
So I'm going to have 2 divided by 2, B, right, plus 12 divided by 2. 2 goes into 2 one time, so we get 1B, and 12 divided by 2 is 6, right? So you get 1B plus 6. But remember, 1B is the same thing as just B. If there's more than 1B, then we put a number in front of it. So if it's just 1B, we just write B. So this is actually equal to B plus 6. Go ahead and do B and C. Pause the video first. Do B and C. Once you have your answers, restart the video to see if you got the correct answer. Go ahead and pause now. Welcome back. So for B, you should have gotten 5R minus 2. And for C, you should have gotten 7G minus 1. If you got those correct, congratulations. For example 5, expand the expression 4 times X plus Y plus Z. So in expanded form, remember that's when you use the distributive property and you distribute that 4 with everything inside the parentheses. So 4 times X would just be 4X plus 4 times y is 4y, and 4 times z is plus 4z. Remember, we could not combine anything in the parentheses first because all three are different variables. They can't be combined. They're not like terms. All right, exercise four. Expand the expression from a product to a sum by removing grouping symbols using an area model and repeat repeated use of the distributive property. So you're doing the same thing. We have 3 times x plus 2y plus 5z. You're going to multiply the 3 and the x, then the 3 and the 2y, and then the 3 and the 5z. 3 times x is 3x plus 3 times 2y is 6y plus 5 times 3 is 15z. And that is your answer. Okay, so that wraps it up for today's lesson. Now you have the problem set, which is your homework. Um, go ahead and complete that. And remember, if you have any problems, questions, you're still confused, if you need anything, feel free to ask during class or come see me during my office hours. Hope you have a great day.